Welcome to this demonstration of multi-protocol file services with protection and cross-cloud data mobility between AWS and Microsoft Azure with Cohesity's Data Protect Cloud Edition. So before I dive into the demo, let me provide some information on the use case and the environment that I'm using for this demonstration. I have a Cohesity cluster deployed in AWS where the primary use case is focused around file services and not data protection where we're going to centralize the use and the presentation of abstractions in particular to multiple clouds for the consumption of applications in different environments through multiple protocols at the same time. So I will start with accessing the same uh, sort of storage abstraction directly on AWS from a private data center through a Windows application using SMB. I will follow that up by then accessing the same share at the same time through a Linux virtual machines, which will then be utilizing NFS as a way to accessing the same storage abstraction in the same files directly from Microsoft Azure. Now, because I have the ability to do this and centralize the utilization of file services, I can do other things with, with some other capabilities of the Cohesity Data Platform. In this particular case, I'm gonna use local data protection, and I'm also gonna utilize and leverage uh, cross-cloud data mobility to replicate across AWS and Azure to provide high availability and disaster recovery capabilities to the same information in the event of an outage were to happen. So here I am in the Cohesity cluster that's deployed in AWS. Uh, and let's take a look at the storage abstraction or storage domain, whichever way you want to call it, that is configured to be accessed simultaneously from multiple clouds. Here you can clearly see the protocols that this particular abstraction is accessible through, NFS, SMB, and S3. It has space efficiency features enabled, and there's a QoS or quality of service policy applied. Let's look a little deeper. Here you can see the actual NFS mount path and also the SMB mount path for the same storage abstraction uh, that is currently being presented directly from Azure. Now I'm gonna go back into a vSphere environment uh, and I'm going to access a particular virtual machine that is currently utilizing that mount point, that abstraction, as a file service, which is being shared across multiple environments, and including uh, the, the data center, the public cloud, and another public cloud, which you'll see here in a second. So you can look at the actual share, which is mounted directly into Windows, as I presented before. There's the name of the share, actually. And here's the contents of that particular share. And we're looking at a directory in particular, which holds information uh, that we're kind of sort of messing around here. And I can open the document and say that, look, this is a document that was created and access from a private corporate network to a multiple to a multi protocol file server on AWS. Now, obviously, we've been able to do this uh, for quite some time, but being able to centralize and reduce the number of file servers that may be available in a data center, public or private. Uh, has a lot of value uh, in, in today's world. So let's kind of go through the process of, you know, acting as if this was a traditional file server coming from anywhere else. As you can see here, I can create files. I created a new top secret document and I will add some content into it just so that I can actually view it from another location so that I can prove that I have access from everywhere. So here I've added some content. Now I can actually save the file. I try to close it and save it. And I will try and access the same file now from another uh, location. In this case, that other location is going to be uh, a machine running on Azure. So I'm going to get to my Azure dashboard. As you can see here, I have the actual uh, machine itself that's deployed, uh, attached, or pinned onto my dashboard so that I can very quickly access it. Again, I'm only going to show you, for example, the IP address of this particular machine because I'm going to have to utilize or access the environment through um, uh, the terminal. As you can see here, I'm just basically looking at the IP of that particular node and I'm going to now move on to the terminal and actually try and access that particular machine where from there I will be able to demonstrate full accessibility to the same files in the same directory, the same storage abstraction that I just demonstrated previously through Windows, but I'm going to do it this time through uh, a Linux machine via NFS. So obviously I mounted that particular storage abstraction locally to the system. As you can see here, I call it AWS file server. When I do a list, you can see the same content that I previously demonstrated in the Windows side. I'm now gonna go into the actual AWS Azure directory where I actually modified some files 
and see that I can list them. There you can actually see the both uh, both of the files that were the one, the one, the one that was there, and then the one I created recently. And now let's take a look at the content of the actual file. So if I cat the important data file, you see that the information that comes back is exactly the same one that I showed before in Windows. So if I go and look at the top secret document, I'm, I'm also able to still see the content of that file. Now, the interesting thing would be that I should be able to not only read it or access it, but I should also be able to write to those documents if I wanted to and had the actual permissions to do so. So here's a syntax which allows me to push a particular string into the top secret document. Here, when I look at it again, you can see that I've modified that file and I can actually see that very quickly, instantaneously, uh, right there within the terminal. Now, should I be able to see this information that I added to that file within the windows? Absolutely. So if I go back and open the top secret file, you can see here that it's not properly structured, but you can see the newly added context that I added to that particular file. And if I expand the actual window over, you can see how that file is accessible in terms of the information that I added and how the share in the documents and the files themselves are equally shared across not only a public cloud, but also a private cloud as well. So I'm able to extend the utilization of uh, my storage abstractions across multiple clouds. And here, the one last thing is that I decided to protect locally those files, those shares, so that I can protect them in the event of a failure, not only locally in AWS, but then I'm going to use cross-cloud replication in, uh, through, the, uh, through the data mobility capabilities and replicate that information onto Microsoft Azure in the event of a disaster recovery were to happen. You can see here, the policy and the files are corrected there, and replication is coming directly from AWS. And that's it. Imagine the possibilities and what this enables in the enterprise. Thank you for watching. Thank you.